Hey friends, it's Aubrey. Have you ever seen chicken on sale only to find out that it's for a whole chicken? Well, this has happened to me many times and I never knew how to cook a whole chicken or what to do with it. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to cook a whole chicken in an instant pot in lots of different ways to use all of those chicken pieces. So if that interests you, keep watching. To cook the whole chicken, you're gonna need a variety of spices, some onion powder, garlic powder, canola oil, a whole lemon, salt, pepper, some thyme, and oregano, and some chicken broth, which I'm using the bouillon base because it's cheaper. And we can't forget the paprika. Into a large mixing bowl, I'm going to add in all of the spices. We're gonna start with two teaspoons of salt. Then we're going to add two teaspoons of thyme. My measuring spoon was a little bit too big, so I really just eyeballed the rest of these spices using the teaspoon as a guide. Next, we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of paprika. and then one teaspoon of oregano. One teaspoon of onion powder. A half teaspoon of garlic powder. I really did a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder because I love garlic powder. And then I just eyeballed one teaspoon of pepper. We're gonna mix all of the spices so that they are well combined before we put them onto the chicken. Before we can start putting the spices onto the chicken, we need to pat it dry and remove all of the innards that get left, which we will be saving those to make some chicken broth, so I'm just moving them into a pot. You will want to rotate the chicken and pat it dry on all sides to make sure that all of the moisture is gone, that way the dry rub will stick better. Once it's all dry, you will put it into the bowl with the spices and start spreading those spices around and really rubbing them into the chicken to make sure that when we sear it, all of those awesome flavors stay. We're also going to add in the spices into the cavity of the chicken and we'll be adding in the lemon as well. I halved my lemon and then put it into the chicken. That way it was able to get those juices of the lemon out and so it could fit a little bit better in there. We're gonna add two tablespoons of canola oil to the bottom of our Instant Pot and we're gonna turn it on to saute mode. And we're going to make sure that it's on the high saute mode and once the oil has started to heat up we're going to saute the chicken for about four to five minutes on each side just to get all of those spices and seasonings locked in look how amazing the skin of this chicken is looking and now that we have sauteed it on both sides we're going to remove the chicken from the instant pot and add a cup of broth to the bottom and get all of those nice brown bits off of there and then we're going to add in our trivet we'll cook this on manual pressure or the pressure cook button for 28 to 34 minutes depending on the size of your chicken 
Once it has cooked, you will let it naturally release for about 10 minutes. And then once it is safe to open up the lid, you'll just make sure that it is temped and cooked all the way to 165 degrees. I poked the chicken in a few different areas just to make sure that it was fully cooked. Had to get some help to pull the hot chicken out of the Instant Pot, so thank you, Brandon lovely husband of mine. Cooking the chicken in the Instant Pot made it a breeze. I definitely recommend this method. So with the carcass of the chicken and the innards that I was talking about earlier, we're going to add those to my crock pot and add in some bay leaves, some celery, carrots, and onions. And I'm really just eyeballing this and you can use really pretty much any kitchen scraps that you have from veggies that you think would tend to make a good flavoring with a chicken broth. And so we're going to add those in. You don't necessarily have to finely dice anything, just roughly chop them and add them into your crock pot. And then you'll add in water until almost everything is completely covered or is fully submerged, depending on the size of your crock pot, you may not be able to fill it up to the point where everything is fully submerged in the water. So you'll want to rotate and stir it around every few hours, which is what I ended up having to do just because the chicken bones were a little too tall. I let this cook for a total of about eight hours. You can definitely let it go up to 24 hours. That will produce probably a much richer flavor than just the eight hours, but I wanted to use this for dinner this night, use the chicken broth that I made. And so I'm just going to be taking out some of the bigger chunks and then I'm going to start slowly putting this into a strainer. And once I have the liquid down to a level where it feels safe enough to pick up the steaming hot liquid in the crock pot and dump it in, that's what we're doing here. And then I will be dumping the rest of the liquid straight into that strainer to get out all the big pieces. You can also put it through a kitchen towel or like a cheesecloth to get the little bits and pieces out of your chicken broth. I didn't do that because little bits and pieces don't bother me. It's just those big chunks of veggies and chicken bones that I didn't want in my broth. I also made a little bit of a mess. My dog was very happy about having fresh chicken broth to lick off of the floor. But here is the finished chicken broth. I ended up using this for one dinner that I'll be showing here in just a little bit. And then I ended up freezing the other five cups that it produced. The first night we just had the chicken and some baked potatoes and a green salad. My daughter was not very into the tomatoes. She did, however, like the chicken and the potatoes just fine. The next night we made a broccoli cheddar casserole, which I actually made a video about and I'll go ahead and leave a link to it here and in the description box for you. And then the third night we used that chicken broth and some of the remaining chicken to make a white bean chicken chili, which is one of my favorite chilies, favorite soups. And so I am cooking the beans in my Instant Pot. It's just a lot cheaper to buy the dry beans and cook them yourself, but you can totally use canned beans as well for this recipe. And we're going to add in some olive oil and then an onion that I diced in my Ninja little mini food processor. I'll go ahead and link that down below. It is one of my favorite kitchen tools makes chopping and just preparing meals so much faster. Now we're going to add in one teaspoon of cumin to the Instant Pot as our onions have cooked for a little bit. And then we're going to add in one teaspoon of oregano. If you did not salt your beans or you have unsalted canned beans, you'll want to add more salt than just one teaspoon. If you did salt your beans or have salted canned beans, Definitely just start with the one teaspoon of salt and then add it as needed after everything is cooked together. 
We're also going to add in one teaspoon of pepper and then we'll be adding in two teaspoons of minced garlic or measure it to your heart's desire because, I mean, garlic is one of the best spices ever, so I always do a little bit heavier on the garlic. We're going to stir that around and get all of those spices aromatic and blended together before we add in the rest of the ingredients. We're going to add in one can of diced green chilies and cook that up with the onions and the spices just for a little bit like I said, to kind of meld those flavors together together, and to get them more aromatic. Now we're going to take some of that leftover chicken. I'm using about one and a half cups of chicken and just adding that into my Instant Pot. If you are using this recipe with raw chicken, I will leave this recipe linked in the description box for you. That will have the instructions on what you need to do for raw chicken or frozen chicken. So now that we have the cooked chicken in here, we're going to add in the beans, which I always double the beans just because who doesn't like more beans in their chili? I guess there are people who don't like beans in chili at all, but I am not one of those people. Now we're going to add in four cups of the chicken broth that I made from the bones of the chicken and the extra bits as well as some veggies. This made it so rich and so much more delicious than the canned stuff or the powdered stuff like I normally use. We're going to add, cook this on manual pressure or the pressure cook button for four minutes just because the chicken's already cooked. So it's really just giving it time for the flavors to come together and for the onions to fully cook. This is one of my absolute favorite soups and chilies. I did forget to film adding in the cream cheese, but you do add in a little bit of cream cheese just to give it a creamier texture. And this turned out so good. We had some cornbread with it and a salad, and it was just a wonderful meal. That is all I have for you guys today. I hope this video gave you some inspiration and ideas on what to do with a whole chicken. And if you did like this video, I make weekly content every Sunday on YouTube. And so please hit that subscribe button down below and also turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.